Welcome to the West End Church of Christ. We are conveniently located at 4401 West Broadway. We have ample parking around the building as well as a parking lot that's located adjacent to the building. Our regular order of service is Sunday morning at 10 a.m. we have Bible study. Afterwards at 11 a.m. we have our morning worship. At 5 p.m. on Sundays we have our Sunday evening worship. We do have midweek Bible study Wednesdays at 7 p.m. and we have classes for all ages. At the Western Church of Christ we also offer a radio program called More Bible Talk. It is broadcasted from WLLV, that's 1240 AM on the radio dial, and 101.9 on the FM dial. The dates and times of the classes are Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 2 to 2.30 p.m. We also have a website. It is www.westncoc.com. On this website, you can retrieve lessons brought from the pulpit. Thank you very much. Let's stand, please. From 346. 346. 346. Time is filled with spiritual transitions. Not a word of who shall stand. Feel your hopes on things eternal. Hope to God's unchanging hand. Hope to God's unchanging hand. country one day, and I say the country, the population, a little bit of nothing, a place where they did not have pipes for 
running water as for as city water was desired to be had. The well went dry. You've been asked that question, what will you do when your well runs dry? Mm -hmm. You know what the answer is? You dig a new one. Mm -hmm. You had to dig a new well. Back in 1990, 91, 92, I was preparing a lesson Actually, I was writing, and I was missing a topic, and an older brother told me, he says, you know, I've, I've written a paper on that before, a sermon on that before. He said, you're welcome to it. He says, why dig a new well when you have water right here? Man. What you see behind me is a chart lesson it was actually way back in the day, it was probably a sheet lesson by a preacher by the name of Steve Hudgens. It's an old well, an old well that has not run dry. Many lessons that you hear being preached by many of the brethren, some of them will not tell you that they borrowed it from someone else, but I have no shame in that. It is not Pedro, what's that word? Patriotism or whatever, I'm not a, this, this what you see up here, I want you to look at it very carefully. All of this right here, just words. What you see right here is Bible. What you see over here is Bible and a topic leading to each one of those scripture references. I want you to pay very close attention to it because this lesson has been transformed from a chart lesson, a sheet lesson, into a PowerPoint lesson. Mm -hmm. And that is what we're going to talk about today. This is not the first time you've seen this, by the way. You've seen it before, and I, I didn't say exactly all that I'm saying now, but I've told you from time to time that this lesson was borrowed from someone else. They put it out there on the website, on the internet, in order for you to use for you to learn by it, for you to help others by it, for you to grow by these things. I want you to understand the title, Preaching to Please. <laughs> Y'all don't know me by now. <laughs> what, I, what I say, if it don't please you, it's not my fault. It's not your fault. Brother Anopolis, as he was praying in reference to the things in which we preach, the things in which, which I say, it's from the word of God. I'm here to help you, not hurt you. If I say anything that makes you mad, come to me. Let's talk about it. Let's sit down. Let's open up the word of God. And probably by the end of it, I'll say, it's not me that you had a problem with. The problem is with God's word. Well, That's who the problem is with. It's with God's word. And if you got a problem with his word, you have a problem with him. If you have a problem with him, you don't want to spend eternity in heaven where he is. Mm -hmm. Galatians chapter 1, verse 10. 10. Again, Paul is very, very precise in what he's saying here unto the church of Galatia as he wrote to them, telling them, explaining to them that they should not be following man because he is not following man. He is not following man. Galatians chapter 1 and the verse is 10 once again. For am I now seeking the approval of man or of God? Or am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please men or man, I would not be a servant of Christ. Now you remember where, where Paul came from, as Saul, what he was doing, the persecuting of the church, on his way to Damascus in order, he had gotten that letter from the council to go to Damascus and uh, to, to drag men and women out of their homes, out of their houses, taking them and throwing them into prison. And the bright light from heaven shone down, knocked them to the ground, blinded him. Because Paul had a great mission before him. And it was not to persecute the church, but it was to grow the church, to do the things that God wanted done. So here he is saying, well, I am not seeking the approval of man. Or am I seeking the approval of man or of God? Or am I trying to please man? 
if I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of God or Amen. of Christ. Amen. I, want you to, I want you to hear that again. If I were still trying to please man. So what is he saying? He said that one time, at one point in his life, he was pleasing man, destroying the church, those that were in the way, destroying them, standing by as Stephen was being stoned at the end of Acts chapter 7, giving his consent unto those things, asking and receiving that letter to go to Damascus, to drag those men and women out of their homes, those that were in the way, those that were members of the Lord's church. He has said right here, I am no longer that person. No longer that person. Pleasing, preaching to please. For I do not persuade men, or, or do I now persuade men or God? We have to ask ourselves that same question. Who are we following? Who are, who are we trying to please? Who are we serving? What preaching do you want? preaching do you want? See, we can very well say right now, many of you, I can turn this down off and you can say go sit down and I'm ready to go home. But you know what? It's not going to happen. That. What preaching, preaching do you want? My brother, brother Pierce came up here this evening and he didn't even speak to me first. He had said, I heard you got a good nap. That doesn't mean I'm going to keep y'all to midnight. But we do want to look at God's word, don't we? We want Amen. to know what does say the Lord. What preaching do you want? Preaching that pleases man or God? Which one do you want? 2 Timothy 4, verse 1 through 4. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust they shall heap unto themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and turn and shall be turned unto fables. What does that really mean? Teacher having itching ears. You tell me the things that's going to, to make me feel good. The things in which I don't have to change the way I'm living. You know, we have turned a lot of people away because of the way we live our lives. Amen. You know, you encourage someone to become a Christian and they look at your life and they say, why should I become a Christian? You're doing the very things that I'm doing. Hmm. Why should I become a Christian? Preaching that pleases man. Y'all really want to see what, what pleases man? Mm -hmm. I could probably go around the room and you can tell me a whole lot of different sermon topics you want to hear. And I want to ask you, how many of them are going to deal with you having to change your life? You're probably looking at the next man and saying, yeah, let, let's preach a sermon on, on this topic here because of what he is doing. <laughs> Be nice. <laughs> Be nice. Yeah, that's what you tell little children, right, when they go out and play with their friends. Be nice. Play nice. I, you know, I can stand before you all day long and tell you some sweet words. I can be nice to you, Brother Simmons. <laughs> I think being nice and, and what, what you mean and what I mean may be two different things. I don't know. Don't mention hell. Well, if you talk about heaven, you're going to have to talk about hell. Man. You talk about love, you're going to talk about hate. You talk about a man, you're going to talk about a woman, right? A husband and a wife. All of these things, you know, one goes with the other. But don't mention hell. A lot of people are going to wind up there. We need to mention hell. We need Amen. to mention it more than one time. Amen. Oh, morality saves. You know, we have to think about how we're living our lives. What, what, what are these people promoting? Again, we, we talk about drinking, we talk about smoking, we talk about immorality, sexual immorality, we talk about you know abortion, we talk about all of those things, but don't preach that. Don't do that. You, you're gonna offend somebody. 
oh, let's let's just preach the uplifting subjects. What's so what, what's uplifting to you? Is it what's uplifting to God? Is it what's going to make you change what you're doing? Don't don't pe preach anything controversial. Don't don't you know? Don't 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 say don't do this because this is what I like doing. Don't tell me I can't do those things. Tell me I can. <laughs> Faith only. Not, not from this book that's called the Bible. You, you're not going to hear us talk about faith only. That, that's what saves us. No, faith and works. Amen. We have to look at these things and we have to talk about these things because these things are from the word of God. Do not be judgmental. You can't judge me. Only God can judge me. A righteous judgment. We can judge you. Judge not that you be not judged, for the judgment in which you judge it would be judged unto you, or what measure you measure, it would be melted unto you. See, we have to understand, when we look at God's word, we just can't take one verse and say, don't judge me, keep reading and see what the Bible says in reference to judgment. Amen. This is Jesus talking. Come on, Matthew chapter 7, verse 1. Do not be judgmental. What? Come on now. Somebody needs to tell us what we're doing wrong. And then... But those same individuals that say, don't judge me, they turn right around and judge you. <laughs> don't say nothing negative. We want only the positive. Not, nothing negative, only the positive. Well, oh, there it is right there, isn't it? Only the positive. That's all, that's all we want to hear. That's going to please you, isn't it? Oh, my. Whew. Don't blast denominations. All right, y'all want to talk about denominations? You give me a 10, you give me a 5, you give me a 1. I even take $2 bills. Those are denominations, right? Those are not the denominations we're talking about. We're talking about those that have a message for their Baptist friends. Those that have a message for their Catholic friends. Those that have a message for their Methodist friends. Telling them that you cannot find those organizations in the Word of God. We have to teach people that there is but one church, and the Amen. church is the one that Jesus built, not the one that some man built. Don't rock the boat. You know what happens when you rock the boat, right? The boat tips over. We don't, we don't want to. We're, we're smooth sailing right now. Don't say anything that's going to trouble the waters. Don't say anything that's going to cause this boat to t cast over. We need to say those things. The boat needs to be rocked in order for us all to get in line with the word of God in order that the boat may sail smoothly. Yeah. Don't condemn. Don't condemn. The word of God condemns. The only thing the preacher is doing is preaching what the word says. That's what's yeah. going to condemn someone. Oh, well, our lack of attendance, we don't want to hear that I need to be at every service. We don't want to hear that. Why not? But, but you know, I, I'm okay. We're, we're not making all the services. I, I make one. Should that not be enough? What does God's word say? Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as a matter of some ills. What about our lack of study? You know, a lot of people say, I don't know what to teach if I had a Bible study with someone. What was taught to you? You need to go and study those things. You know, I have a go-to lesson. I was dreaming about that go-to lesson the other day as I was preaching it to somebody. Yeah, I preach in my sleep. <laughs> a lack of study. We need to study the Word of God in order that when we're asked something, we can give them an answer to it. I know it's in here somewhere. I just read it the other day. You know what you probably should have done? You probably should have highlighted it when you read it the other day. That way you can go to it. My go-to lesson is salvation. I'm going to go ahead and let you know. Our worldliness. No, don't talk about our worldliness. We don't want to hear that. No, don't condemn us because we're out there hanging out with the fellas on the corner. And when the ball is passed, we don't pass it up, but we take it. Don't condemn us for that. When we're out there on our knees, not praying, but shooting dice with others. Yeah, they still do that. Did y'all know that? People are still on their knees shooting dice. Members of the Lord's church. We don't want to, don't, don't, don't talk about that. The collection, what was the collection this morning? Yep, there it is right there. Is it that dice money? I don't know. I don't know. But if you're one of the ones out there shooting dice and, and you're putting it in the collection plate, yeah, it's going to stay. No one's going to give it back to you, but you should not be out there shooting dice, gambling. Oh, immodest clothing. 
you can't tell me how to dress. There's a lot of people that are covered up right now because it's cold outside, but as soon as it starts getting warm, they start taking it off. Sometimes we put on too much, but we don't, it's not your business. I dress the way I want to dress. You didn't buy my clothes. You know what I've been told a whole lot of times since I've been here? You're not my daddy. <laughs> That's true, I'm not. I'm just a, a, a proclaimer of God's word. Amen. We need to talk about immodest, immodest clothing Amen. to our, not just to our young ladies or to our older ladies, but we need to talk to the males too. Amen. Because there's a lot of males that dress immodest and they need to be told about themselves. What does that say? Our stingy giving. Now y'all know this is way back from the day then, don't you? Stingy. How many of y'all have been called stingy lately? Because I know some stingy people. I know some. Well, whatever, whatever I got in my pocket, what you say, but not the monies we got in our pocket. Whatever I got in my pocket is what I'm gonna give. I don't have no money in my pocket right now. At least not in my front pockets anyway. I can't give. I'm, I'm, that, that's, that's stingy, isn't it? You go to your back pocket where you keep all your money at and give some of that. No, we're too stingy to do that. Let someone else do it. Our liberal practices. What does that mean? Well, I, I think that we should to have a garage sale. I think that we should have a bake sale. I think that we should, 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 should house the, the, the homeless. I think that we should do all of these other things. Those are liberal practices. That is not the work of the church as we talked about this morning in Bible class. To do, if I want to do it, don't, don't condemn me for doing it. You can do it. You can do it at home. You want to have a garage sale? Matter of fact, I believe that even if you ask me or Anita, can we set up a garage sale you know, in, in front of your house? Can we do that? We may say yes. Can I put some stuff in it? Do I have stuff to put in it? Yes, I do. And if I want to take those proceeds and put it in the collection plate, that's my right. But elders are not going to have that out here on the front lawn. They're not going to have it in the parking lot. But we don't want to be condemned about that, right? Don't condemn those that are not members of the Lord's church, those alien sinners. They can't help themselves. When they decide that they want to become children of God, they'll do so. Don't, 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 don't condemn them. They have already condemned those that have not obeyed the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And then those individuals, those false teachers, you know, we have even been called false teachers. When we open up the word of God and we just read what the word says, they say, you're a false teacher. How can I be one if I'm just telling you what the word of God says? Amen. Those individuals, as we talk from Galatians chapter 1 there, what Paul was telling them, do not listen to those individuals. If, if, if we or an angel from heaven preach any other doctrine, let him be accursed. Amen. As false teachers, teaching the truth is teaching God's word. Look at this. If you don't, if you don't, you know, rock the boat, if you be nice, if you don't condemn, here's your reward. Everybody like you. <laughs> be careful when everybody say all good things about you. You know that you're not living right. If everybody say all good things about you, you know good well you're not doing what God wants you to do because they did what? They talked about Jesus. Amen. So they very well should talk about us. But if, if you don't, if, if you be nice, if you don't condemn, the pro, you, you're there, everybody's talking good about you, you get a good paycheck, you know. Deceived and ignorant members. That's what you have. That's exactly what you have when you don't preach the truth. You got members that are deceived. You got members that are ignorant. They don't know. They, they're, not, they're not ignorant as, as far as some cases in which we say, you're just ignorant. No, you're ignorant because you don't know. You're not putting forth the effort to study the judgments. When we look at that in Matthew chapter 7, verse 23, we talked about that this morning. You're going to be turned away. When you look at Matthew chapter 25, verse 41, you're going to be turned away. Cast out into the lake with burning with fire and sulfur. We have to be careful what we do and what we say. And we have to preach the word whether people like it or whether they don't like it. Amen. God is pleased when we preach what? His word. Amen. It's what we just read, isn't it? 
be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all those suffering doctrine? That's what God is pleased with. If God is pleased with it, man might as well be pleased with it because it's not going to change the fact that the truth is the truth. Amen. First Peter chapter 4 and the verse is 11. First Peter chapter 4 and the verse is 11. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. His word needs to be preached. This is what God is pleased with. The truth. What does John say about the truth? You know, a lot of people say, you know, you, you understand the Bible one way, I understand it another. There's no way we can understand the same. That's a lie. Amen. For what John chapter 8, verse 32 says here, you can know the truth and the truth will set you free. Amen. Others say it will make you free. Whichever, you're free. If you know what the truth is and you follow the truth. John Amen. chapter 17, verse 17, where Jesus says, Sanctify them through thy truth. What is truth? Your word is truth. Amen. This is what God is pleased with. He's pleased with the truth being taught. So therefore, what do we do when we stand before a group of people? We preach the truth. We give them what they need, not what they want. The gospel message. Paul is very clear on this, and we should be clear on it as well. I love how the King James states verse 15 here in Romans chapter 1. He says, therefore, as much as in me is, I'm ready to preach the gospel at Rome. And that's what I say. As, as much as in me is, I'm ready to preach the gospel wherever I am. Why? Because of what Paul says here. We need to feel the same. I am not ashamed of the gospel. For the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believes. To the Jew first. And also to the Greek. This word is powerful. It will save us. It will save you. So therefore we need to believe it. You know there are some sweet talking people out there. That have sugar coated the gospel message. But yet they want people to follow them. Why? Because they want to follow it. They want to be popular. They, they don't want any. They don't want to condemn anybody. They're condemning themselves. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 through 9, I, as Paul writes here again, he says, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. I'm astonished. I'm marveled. I'm baffled. You know, you, you have a good thing and, and you mess it up. That's just what Paul is telling them right here. I'm astonished. I'm scratching my head at this. Why are you turning to another gospel? He said, not that there is another one, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be accursed. A lot of times we read things and and we keep on and we read it again. And that's what he says. As we have said before, so now I say again. If anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you receive, let him be accursed. Sometimes we have to read something twice. It has to be written twice. We want to stress the importance of this. The gospel message needs to be proclaimed throughout the land so that people may know what they need to do and how they need to do it. Man. Christ is the way. You mean to tell me my, my, my pastor is the wrong way? Everything that he said is not really according to the word of God? If he is serving as a pastor by himself, he's not doing what the word of God says. Titus wasn't told to go and appoint one man in the local churches. He said you go and appoint elders in every city. Elders. There's a plurality of elders. Pastors. Bishops. Overseers. See, those words are used interchangeably for that position. And for one that says, I'm the bishop over here and I'm going, to, I'm going to direct men to go to these different places, he hasn't been given that right. So we have to look at who's the way. Who's the, the head shepherd? Man. It's Jesus the Christ. Man. 
Jesus says in John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. We don't dictate who comes into the church. When a man is ready to obey the gospel, all we can do is assist him in yeah. doing so. All else, what he does, is going to be up to him and God. We all, all we can do is encourage him. And so we need to do those things. God is pleased when we preach faith and obedience. Not just faith alone. Faith and obedience. Why? Because of what James chapter 2, verse 24 says. James chapter 2 and the verse is 24. We need to look at the word of God. We need to use the word of God. When we call ourselves preaching the word of God. James chapter 2. Verse 24, you see that a person is justified by works and not by faith only or faith alone. Everyone, again, Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, that says unto me, Lord, Lord, will not enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father who is in heaven. What do you mean, do the will of my Father? All I have to do is have faith. Is that not what they say? No, do the will of my Father. What does the Father want? He wants you to be obedient. He wants you to work. I'm not talking about going out there and punching that time clock either. I'm talking about working. I'm talking about working for the Lord, doing the things that are right, the things that he has called us to do. And yes, there are many things that we're called to do. You say, I can't do anything. You can. You can do something if it's nothing but pray. And I know we can do a whole lot more than that. And we need to be doing a whole lot more than that. So faith and obedience go hand in hand. Romans chapter 6 and the verse is 17. Romans chapter 6 and the verse is 17. Romans 6, 17. But thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed. The standard of teaching in which you were committed. There is a standard, a standard that we need to live by, that, that we need to continue on doing what is right and pleasing before God. In verse 18, it says, and having been set free from sin and have become slaves of righteousness. Slaves of righteousness. Now, there's not many times where we, we accept being called a slave, but here is one where we need to say, yes, I'm a slave. I'm in chains in order to work for the Lord. Following his will, stand in line, doing the things that are right. Baptism is for remission of sin, the removal of sins, the forgiveness of sins. Acts chapter 2 and the verse is 38. There's a lot of people, so-called Christians, that are still in sin because they have not had their sins washed away. Acts 2.38, again, you know, uh, there are people, now I've told you this before, and I'm going to share it with you once again. There are people of the Lord's church that say, why do you stress the importance of baptism? Why do you keep telling people that they need to be baptized? Because it's the truth. They do need to be baptized. But they have to also know why they need to be baptized. Acts chapter 2, when we, when we go through Acts chapter 2, I, I thought about for a moment, you know, just preaching from Acts chapter 2 on this evening, but at a change of heart. But you find in Acts chapter 2, in verse 36, where, where Peter and the other apostles are there talking to these people, and they're telling them what they have done. Here all nations are gathered together on the day of Pentecost, and what a great way in, this, in order to get the gospel message out than this one right here. He tells them in verse 36, let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, that Jesus whom you crucified. Somebody tell you that you crucified somebody. And here they are declaring to you the person that you crucified, you find out that this was a great person. You asked the question, as they asked the question, because they were cut to the heart, they were pricked in their hearts, and they said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? What shall we do? Men and brothers in some cases, what shall we do? Peter didn't tell them, don't worry about it. When you crucified him, Jesus had done it all. No, it is what he said. No, 
Did Jesus not say it is finished? Yeah, he said it is finished. But he also said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they're doing. When did the forgiveness come about? When men did what they were supposed to do. When is the forgiveness coming about? When men do what they're supposed to do. And so when they asked that question, brothers, what shall we do? Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promises to you, to your children, to those that are far off, and as many as the Lord our God shall call. You know what those people did? The Bible says in verse 41, about 3,000 listened to that message, and they were obedient unto that message. Verse 47 says, praising God and having faith with all the people, the Lord asked to the church daily such as should be saved. See, people were coming to grips with themselves and say, I've done wrong. I need to make a change. And they made that change, and they did what God wanted them to do. They were baptized, had their sins washed away, added to the body of Christ by the Lord himself. Again, Mark chapter 16, verse 15, where it says, go and teach or preach to every creature. Every creature, he that believes and is baptized will be saved, but he that believes not will be condemned. Why do we talk about baptism? Because baptism is important. Man. This is the preaching that God is pleased with. I can tell you all day long how to live a good life, but if I never tell you how to become a child of God, I'm doing you a disservice. Mm. The one church. Oh, there you go. Our denomination of friends, there is but one church. People say, but there, there, there's another no, there's not another. There's only one church. Man. Both Jew and Gentile came together in order to become part of this one church. And it's still happen happening today. It is not many denominations. It's one church and many members. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. Jesus himself said, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That mean that means that the church is going to stand forever. Amen. The church is going to be here until that day when Jesus comes back to receive unto Himself a perfect church and deliver it unto the Father. The one church. Do we need to talk about the one church? Yes, we do. We need to talk about the one church because there are people that are saying, "I'm a I'm a, I'm a Baptist Christian, or I'm a Methodist Christian, or I'm a I'm a Catholic." No. There's no hyphenated Christians. You're either a Christian or you're not a Christian. Man. We have to understand that. One church, the church that Jesus built, Ephesians chapter 1, and the verse is 22. Ephesians chapter 1, and the verse is 22. It's God's word. And he put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church. Man. The church, definite article one, the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. And go and look there as we continue looking at verse 23 there, which is his body, the church, his body, the body, his church, saying, man, it's not man-made. Jesus is the one that gave his blood, as Brother Brian was talking about it this morning, in order to purchase the church. He's the one that came to save his people from their sins. He's the one that built the church. In Ephesians chapter 4, verses 4 through 6, he talks about the ones there. One body, one body, which is the church. All the counsel of God. God wants all of his word to be preached. You know, a lot of times people say, you're picking on us. <laughs> why, why, are you, why are you just talking about this group of people right here? Why are you not talking about them? I don't believe that can be said about what comes from this pulpit right here. The brothers Man. that come up here, they don't care who they talk about. <laughs> We're going to talk about sin. We're going to talk about living right. We're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about that. We're going to preach the whole counsel of God. Why? Because the whole counsel of God needs to be preached. Amen. The whole counsel. This is what God is pleased with. Again, it's not the things that's going to tickle your ears, but it's the thing that's going to make you think about how you're living. If you're doing what's right, keep doing those things. If you're doing what's wrong, stop doing what's wrong. Acts chapter 20, verse 20 through 27. How I did not shrink from declaring to you anything that was profitable and teaching you in public and from house to house, testifying both to Jews and to the Greeks of 
repentance toward God and of faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, behold, I am going to Jerusalem, constrained by the Spirit, not knowing what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and afflictions await me. This is Paul. Look at the condition he's in. He's in constraints. But what is he willing to do to preach the whole counsel of God? Because that is what's going to save men. Amen. Not what they want to hear, but what they need to hear. He says, but I do not account, I do not account my life of any value nor oppression to myself. If only I may finish my course and the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God and now to the gospel of the grace of God and now behold, I know that none of you among whom I have gone about proclaiming the kingdom will see my face again. Therefore, I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all. And verse 27, for I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. Amen. Do not let it be said about you when you've seen your friend doing something wrong that you did not tell them that it was wrong. Do not let that be said about you. Do not let that be said about us. Preach the whole counsel of God. Now I'm going to give you a bye on the rest. You can see what's, what's happening here. It's the preaching of the word of God that's going to save mankind. You hear people say, we are a Christian nation. Mm -hmm. And you know what I say. No, God is not judging us as a nation. Mm -hmm. He's judging us as individuals. We must do what we must do in order to be pleasing to God. Hear the truth. Be obedient unto the truth. The preaching of the word of God needs to be done each and every day. Amen. If you're here and you're not a child of God, you want to learn more about God's word, do not hesitate to ask us to sit down with you, to study with you, and to show you what you need to change in your life in order to become a Christian. And of course, we already know that it leads to baptism. And once you come out of that water, you, become a, you, you are now a child of God. You're going to have your problems. You're going to have your ups. You're going to have your downs. But remember that when you fall short, do not stay down. Accept the hand that someone has given to you, take them by the hand, allow them to help you up, and confess your faults unto God, who is just to forgive you of all unrighteousness. If you're here and you're not a child of God and you want to become one, that opportunity is yours. That alien sinner, that person that's a member of some denominational group, we want you to come away from that group. We want you to study the word of God and we want you to become a child of God and not a child of the world. And if you're falling short, we want to encourage you to come back to the fold as we stand and sing the invitation hymn. Please come. Oh, when my door is standing, they drawing.